Well, good afternoon. It's uh, June 17th, 2020. And uh, in, in light of some of the COVID-19 restrictions that are being placed on universities with regard to field days, um, many of us across the, the Midwest and the Mid-South area are doing uh, these video recordings to try to get some of our information out to the end users. And so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk down through some plots that we've uh, sprayed some, some burn down treatments on about 12 days ago. And basically what I wanna do is kind of walk you through some of the things that, that we're seeing. And uh, this would be uh, kind of a central or west central Indiana type of environment that we've had this spring. And we wanna talk about some of the efficacy that we're seeing on mare's tail on one side and giant ragweed on the other side. And then we'll, we'll give you some conclusions to what we're seeing here at the end. The first thing we'll do here is we'll set up our plot layout and application parameters. So the first series of treatments we're gonna discuss were applied on June 5th. Our weather conditions were mid 80s as far as temperature and we were coming off a little bit of a wet spell. And so our plants were, were well hydrated so we hadn't experienced any drought stress yet. And our horseweed was anywhere from four to 12 inches in height. Uh, sprayer was set up with 15 gallon per acre of carrier volume and these were walked on with a backpack sprayer. So the way the plots are laid out, the sign is in the middle of the plot and we have untreated running checks, which I'll point out as we move further down the line here to kind of show you what the weeds would look like um, in, in these running checks and this would be an unsprayed area. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through uh, four different treatments. So we've got an untreated check here We've got a glyphosate product in the next one, and then a glyphosate plus 2,4-D, and a glyphosate plus dicamba. So I'm standing now in the untreated plot. We are 12 days after the application of the treatments in the other plot. The horseweed ranged from four to 12 inches in height when it was sprayed. And now we have horseweed ranging anywhere from about eight, oh, to probably 24 inches tall or so. So this is what an untreated check looks like. As I move in this direction here, I'm moving into the plot that was treated only with glyphosate. So obviously this is a glyphosate resistant population of horseweed. You can see a few dead plants in here, but for the most part, uh, what you see are plants that were initially injured by glyphosate. They would show some yellowing in the tops and then they started to regrow. So we have thinned the population a little bit, but I would say well over 90% of this population is glyphosate resistant. So this was a very common site uh, in the state of Indiana dating back to 2001, 2002, 2003. And so most of the state then at that point made some pretty quick transitions to doing different things, whether that was adding post-emergence uh, chlorimuron or chlorancelam to their glyphosate program, getting some 2,4-D in the burn down um, to try to get this mare's tail population to, to uh, behave more like we want it to behave. So one of the most common things that was done back in that era, and one of the cheaper things, or probably the cheapest thing, was simply to get some 2,4-D in the burn down treatment. So again, we're 12 days out here, and when we compare the control with glyphosate alone versus glyphosate plus 2,4-D, it's definitely better. Um, but what you can see here is even with adding an auxin herbicide, whether it's 2,4-D, or whether it's dicamba, uh, we are not getting very rapid uh, control of these plants. So we, we've beat them up pretty effectively. Um, you know, I think we've largely protected soybean yield if we can come back in here and finish these off with 2,4-D, dicamba, or Liberty. But to get an effective burn down, even when we have hot, sunny weather, we, throughout most of the state of Indiana now, we need to do something more than just adding uh, 2,4-D or dicamba to our burn down treatment. And that's why we talk an awful lot during our summer meetings about doing fall applied herbicides to get those mare's tail controlled that emerged in the fall of the year. So that way we don't have a population like this that we have to deal with in the spring. So as I move over to this uh, plot that had Roundup plus dicamba, again, we see a very similar scenario here with Roundup dicamba versus Roundup 2,4-D. We're 12 days out, the plants aren't dead. They probably haven't grown all that much, but anytime I still see green on a plant 12 to 14 days out, 
I'm concerned that I'm going to have to come back in here and retreat. Okay, we're moving down the line here into some of our, our other treatments. And I'm standing in the running check or an unsprayed area. And we've got two different treatments that we're going to discuss here. So the treatment on my left would be Roundup plus Sharpen. The treatment on my right would be Roundup plus Sharpen plus 2,4-D. Right? Yeah. Okay. So um, one of the things that became really obvious as we pointed out in, in, the, uh, previous, uh, in the discussion of the previous plots was that adding 2,4-D or dicamba to glyphosate is better than glyphosate alone but probably not getting us completely to where we want to be, where we want weeds that are, for the most part, dead at uh, 12 to 14 days after treatment. So BASF developed the uh, Safe Lufenacil product. Uh, I was part of that uh, testing process around uh, 15 years ago, and about 10 years or so ago, that product came onto the market, and it really helped out in terms of being able to control uh, mare's tail, uh, giant ragweed and some of the other weeds that are typically present early in the growing season. So what you can see here with this Roundup Sharpen treatment is we definitely have very good efficacy on the horseweed. Um, we still have a few plants that have some green tops in them uh, and those, those plants will survive. They will go on and, and uh, complete their life cycle if they're not treated again. Um, but we've done a pretty good job of getting these things beat back and giving our post-emerge herbicide a better chance of working on a weed that's showing a little bit more injury symptoms. When we have the 2,4-D in with the Sharpen, what you can see here is better control. We still have some plants that have some green stems on them. We have a few regrowing in the front of the plot, which that could be a matter of getting the, uh, the boom charged. But what you see as you scan the entire plot is you just don't see the plants that have um, the, the green tops in them. So having uh, the, both the Sharpen and the 2,4-D with the glyphosate has been the, uh, the best treatment that we've looked at so far today. All right, uh, now I'm standing in between our two Gramoxone-based treatments. So we have Gramoxone and a Metribuzin-based product on my left. We have Gramoxone. Metribuzin and 2,4-D on my right. And what you see here is again, a very quick uh, efficacy with these Gramoxone based treatments. With the Gramoxone Syncor that doesn't have the 2,4-D in it, you, much like we saw with the Sharpen treatment that didn't have 2,4-D in it, you do see a lot more plants that are green in the top and that will go on and complete their life cycle. They're, they're set back quite a bit. They can be finished off with a post-emerge treatment of the right mode of action. Um, but if we simply add 2,4-D into our Gramoxone-based treatments, the efficacy is a little bit higher here, not quite as, as good as what we're looking at with the glyphosate, safe lufenacil, and 2,4-D, but nonetheless, we did get a, a better kill where we had two alternative modes of action in this mixture as compared to the, the one alternative mode of action. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about here with our mare's tail plots are these Liberty-based treatments. Now, typically we don't think of Liberty as a good burn down herbicide because Liberty uh, as a herbicide works much better under sunny, hot conditions with high humidity. So typically if we're doing burn down treatments in April, we don't have that kind of weather in the Eastern Corn Belt. Now, given the fact that we did these burn down treatments in early June, we had 80 degree, sunny, 80 degree and sunny weather, and, and we also had some well watered plants, Liberty was really active and that's kind of an optimal situation to use Liberty. So on the left here, we have Liberty Plus. On the left here, we have Liberty by itself. On the right here, we have Liberty with 2,4-D, okay? So again, as you look across these plots, the, the efficacy was, was very fast. It's, it's been fairly complete with both Liberty and the Liberty 2,4-D. And so for those of us that uh, didn't get our beans planted in uh, early May, if we're into this June planting time frame because of wet weather or perhaps we're double cropping, um, this would be a good situation here to use a, a Liberty-based herbicide for a burndown program. So to wrap up our discussion of uh, mare's tail burndowns with early June applied burndown treatments, obviously it's a glyphosate resistant population. 
Um, adding 2,4-D and dicamba to glyphosate was, was definitely better than glyphosate alone, but we really needed two, two or more um, active uh, modes of action in that mixture to get effective burn down control. So treatments that had glyphosate plus Sharpen plus 2,4-D, Gramoxone Sencor plus 2,4-D, or the Liberty-based programs were the programs that gave us the most uh, thorough control of mare's tail. And again, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to get 98 to 99 percent control. We want to stunt these plants as much as possible, and we want to be able to have our uh, we want to be able to give our post-emerge herbicide an opportunity to work. So that's kind of the summary of mare's tail burn down, and uh, we'll go on and talk about giant ragweed next. One of the things that we frequently encounter in our no-till systems in the state of Indiana is not only do we have things like mare's tail, chickweed, henbit, purple dead nettle, um, crestleaf ground cell, and some of the winter annual grasses to deal with, but it's not uncommon to have some of our early emerging summer annual weeds like giant ragweed, um, lamb's quarter, and foxtail to be emerged at the time that we're doing these burn down treatments. And so one of the things I think particularly that's become more important is the ability of this burn down herbicide to work on these early emerging summer annual weeds. So typically with grasses like foxtail or even fall panicum that might come up early, glyphosate works really well on those grasses. We haven't had any issues. Where we've run into challenges is, is getting good activity on lamb's quarter and giant ragweed uh, in the spring under some cool cloudy weather conditions. Now, we don't, we, the, the good news is, is that with the herbicides that we use in a burn down scenario, both lamb's quarter and giant ragweed are fairly easy to control. So efficacy is almost always fairly complete and fairly high when we have things like 2,4-D, dicamba, or uh, safe lufenacil, the sharpened product in the tank. So we didn't see quite the treatment separation out here with those uh, particular um, herbicides, but the key thing to keep in mind is whenever we have cool, cloudy weather, we just need to be careful with lamb's quarter because lamb's quarter becomes really tolerant to, to glyphosate treatments when we have cool, cloudy weather. Giant ragweed, on the other hand, giant ragweed is so sensitive to dicamba and 2,4-D um, that we really, um, we really are, can have effective control of those weeds just by having uh, at least eight ounces. You know, we'd like to see 16 or more, but at least eight ounces of one of those products in the tank uh, for a burn down situation. So we're not gonna walk you through all these giant ragweed plots. We just basically wanted to give you a summary there that um, again, for those weeds, dicamba or 2,4-D or Sharpen is gonna be a very effective program. But if you have mare's tail, you need to make sure you have at least two active sites of action in there to pick up the mare's tail. Because it's probably not likely that you have many no-till fields that have giant ragweed and that don't have mare's tail because mare's tail has become so prevalent over the last 15 to 20 years. So that's kind of the wrap up for today's video. Um, first of many to come, I hope. <laughs>